G'day folks, Jason here from the Outer Farm. I'm actually on the trial property this morning. I want to talk about pugging. It had that much rain over the last six months, it's not funny. So we'll jump in the paddock. They're due for a move, probably due three and a half hours ago, but because it hasn't stopped raining, I haven't been down here to be able to move them in. We'll jump in now and we'll move them into the next cell and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Before I jump in and wind that polybrate up, I'll just turn this solar energizer off. I know it's been low for the last week and a half because it's been total cloud out, just about. It's only sitting on 3.2 at the moment. That normally sits on about 4.8. We've had enough rain, obviously, for that to be well and truly grounded. It's only low because the sun has been out and recharging it because it's not hooked up to mains, it's just a solar one. So I would say if we have sunshine for a couple of days, that's definitely going to be back to 4.8 and really give you a good boot because there's enough moisture in the ground to get good earthing. You can hear all the water under my galoshes. The paddock's laid in the water at the moment, just sitting on the top of the surface. Hasn't got the opportunity to run through because it's that saturated. It's going to be all runoff. Come on, girls. So our annual rainfall here is 33 and a half inches annually. And over the last six months alone, we've had a total of 34 and a quarter inches. More specifically, over the last three months, we've had 20 inches of rain. To break it down even further, this month alone being March, we've had 10 and a half inches so far and still a week of March left. I think it's supposed to be showers for the next few days and then coming wet again, so we're going to get more rain. But like I mentioned, our annual rainfall is 33 and a half inches annually, and we've had 34 and a half in the last six months. So we've had our annual rainfall in a six month period. And predominantly most of that, or more than half of that, the 20 inches has come in the last three months. What we'll do is we'll head around now and have a look at some of this pugging. Along this fence line, generally this is where I just pulled up that poly braid from. You're going to get worse of the pugging around your fence lines because obviously they've been following this fence line. It's the areas like that. They're following the fence line trying to get over in the next area. So they've been walking up and down that all morning, as you can see, chewing underneath the fence line. This is where they were. This is where they had the fence line was here and they're chewing under it. And then that's where they couldn't reach. So they probably got a meter around that fence line, weren't going to go any further because they knew they'd get a bit of a zap from that line. There's a lot of water line around here, tugging bad in this corner, as you can see right there. That's a turning point. Then they've gone down this fence line in front of the water, mud there, mud there. You can hear it squelch on my feet. There's a lot of mud. I try and find a hoof mark, there's a nice hoof mark there. So that hoof mark, deep depth wise, would be two inches deep. There, all the way through here. In the middle here, it's not too bad. I'll explain why in a minute. There's a fence line from yesterday. As I'm rolling out these fence lines, they're walking up and down the poly braid, waiting for me to move them in. And that creates pugging itself. We'll come over here, I know there's an area over here of pugging. Once again, this is along the fence line. Pugging all the way through here. And that's where they're trying to get down there, out of the rain. The saving grace across this paddock, because I've been doing it just over the four and a half year mark now, is the amount of armor or thatch I've got on the ground. I've probably got three quarters of an inch of dead matter over the last four and a half years built up under this fresh stuff laid down. But then there's this also, the stuff they just trample down. All this stuff here laying down the ground, that acts as a mat on the ground. Because it crosses over each other, it's woven together. So it's adding support. When these animals walk across here now, they've got to push through that support layer of thatch to reach the mud. Unlike the other farm where I haven't started cell grazing yet, you can part the grass and there's dirt instantly. These cows, if the rain event was out there and I was cell grazing like high stocking density out there, they would go straight into that mud because there's no thatch or give on top of the surface straight into the mud. Unlike here, you've got that protection zone of thatch, which actually is a suspension or a suspension layer. 
had I have kept grazing through here for days on end, yes, you would, the wood, wood, mud would come through. And the fence lines has got, obviously, the amount of pugging because that's where they follow when they're grazed. But in the section here where they just graze through and through the grass, there's a lot less pugging. Another saving grace you might notice is I've only got that one poly braid up. So if you see me wind that one up before, and I haven't put a back fence up in here. They've been here for probably three days now, and I haven't put a back fence up at all. Had I have left this poly braid in here and had them confined to this area, I would have had a load more pugging. Because when you're doing high stocking density grazing, I found out that you've always got a matriarch. We've always got a certain amount of cattle that are ahead of the rest, and it generally goes down with age. So when they get in here, it's generally argy-bargy and they're pushing each other around. Like at the moment, she's a lot older than this young bully and she is a lot smaller, but she's pushing him around because she's a lot older. Had you ever had her confines to this area, you find that they'll be, they generally chase each other because she thinks that he's got better pasture. So she'll go over and push him out the road. And if you're in this confines, they're restricted. They'll actually just run around to the fence and run down here and you find they'll always be pushing each other. But at the moment I've noticed is when she comes over and pushes him, he can freely walk away, do a big arc and come back down the other end. Had she been staying in here, she'd be constantly upping him to move on. I normally run six to eight in an area like this. So what I would have done predominantly, because I'm only running the three, I've reduced the area down. Had I been running eight, it would have been the normal area. I still wouldn't have had the back fence for the reasons I just spoke about. And I have been finding that that has reduced the pugging considerably because they're not actually fighting one another for the pasture. They can freely walk back and forwards into the zone and get out of each other's road. So that's helped dramatically. So every 12 hours, roughly, I'm out here assessing the situation, especially the amount of rain we have had. I just don't want to overpug the area. Had I had the eight head out here, I would have given their normal size area, but then assess the situation. Had it continuously kept raining and got boggier and boggier, I wouldn't have just left them in there, grazed that 12 hour period and pugged down the pasture worse. I would have moved them through the cell because at the moment they've been here roughly an hour and hour, and I can see they've eaten probably three to four inches of that grass down. I would, and that's probably that's probably roughly two foot high. That's enough to stop that seed production of that plant, because the, the only job of the plant is to get seed and germinate. So they've chewed that down. I would have kept pushing them through to save the paddock from pugging, and pushed them through the rest of the property. And when the rain had settled. I then would have bought them through again and chewed it down that required amount between that 50 and 60% mark, I like to leave it. But to alleviate the pugging, had it continue rain, I just would have moved them through. That way they're not in the same area walking over the same spot. You're going to get small amounts of pugging, but it's the constant moving. As you know, if you've done car tracks or driven over wet ground before or walked over the same area, it brings the water to the surface and that brings the mud and then you get the pugging. Moving them through alleviates that. They're only going to cross the ground once or twice, three times max, and it hasn't brought that mud through the grass. I would have moved them across the property. As soon as the rain settled down, I would have moved them back through again and chewed that required height down. That's about all you can do. If you leave them in one paddock, it's just going to be mud. And as we all know, when it comes to mud, when you get bare dirt, if you leave them in there and you come back to bare dirt, you're going to get weeds. I found when you spray a lot of weeds, when we used to use, spray all our weeds in their paddock before we started continuous grazing, or before we started the regenerative grazing, from weeds, you get more weeds. Over the big area that died off, you expose the dirt and it's easy for mother nature to grow a weed than it is to grow solid pasture. She'll pop up out of the ground the weeds that will suit your soil type. So if you get a copious amount of pugging in this one area, you're going to get a load of exposed mud and you're going to get a lot of weeds so you're trying to move them across the property and keep your pasture intact on the ground rather than go back to bare soil.
So I'm going to turn this energizer back on now. Not that I expect you to get too much charge out of it. Oh, 3.6, 3.7. It's gone up. It's only 3.1 before, so it's gone up around about 0.7 since that little bit of sun's been around. So I've got to go out the other farm now and do a bit of work out there. The only other thing you could do, if you did get a mount, copious amounts of pugging in bare soil, and this doesn't go just for pugging, it goes for any bare soil in your property. After all this rain, if I got a load of pugging and wasn't moving them through, the first thing I would do was throw down seed because you've got a lot of moisture in the ground, so the germination is going to be high, and then go over it with a layer of thatch. Either roll out some hay or some mulch on the ground. You've only got to protect the soil from the sun, and Mother Nature won't throw any weed through it. If you can protect it from stop it from drying out, Mother Nature's happy. Your seeds will germinate and bring you up the past you want. The thatch layer will stop any compaction, any more further rain directly hitting that soil and stop it compacting down. It hits, that, it hits a mulch, slows that velocity and seeps through into the ground. Had it been bare burnt, like I said, you've got more compaction. Your soil's going to wash away because it's got, got no armour over it. Your soil's going to wash or lose all your topsoil. You get compaction. It'll dry out. Then Mother Nature will throw out weeds. But on that note, I can talk forever. Very passionate. But I've got to get the other farm. So have a good morning. Have a great afternoon and a terrific evening, guys. Wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. See you later, girls.